Hi everyone, it's James here and in this tutorial we're going to be making a drop down menu just using CSS and we're going to take a basic template and just put a menu on the top of it and then when you hover over certain elements it will drop down another menu providing you with further menu options. So let's dive in and take a look at the template and then we're going to start writing our drop down menu using CSS. So let's get started making our CSS drop down menu. So we're just going to put a bit of HTML into our template that we've got here on the page at the moment. And then we'll start working on the styling on that so that we get a drop down effect. So over here in the nav element that I've got, I'm just going to put an unordered list in here. And inside the unordered list, I'm just going to put some list items, uh, which in turn will each have an anchor tag in there. Just go for three for the moment. And just put some text inside of each one. So we can say menu one. Menu 2 and then Menu 3. And then when the page refreshes, you can see we've got our three menu items at the top there and they don't look great at the moment. So the first job is just going to be to get these into a line so that we've got them as a horizontal list instead of a vertical list. So let's go to our SCSS file. And just to give you a bit of an explanation as to what's going on here, we've just got some default settings up for our body and also some variables that we're going to be using. And I've just applied some styles to the header and the nav element that we can see at the top of the page here. So inside of the nav element, let's actually target the unordered list that we've got there. And the first thing to do is just say the list style type is none. Which you can see just removes the disks from the items that we've got there already. And the other thing I'll do is just set the font size to be a bit bigger. So 1.5 rems. And then we're going to set the height of this unordered list to 100% of the containing nav element. You can see we've already set a maximum height on the header here at the top. And also an unordered list will come with a bit of margin and padding built in. So let's remove those. And finally, we're going to set its position equal to relative. So that's really just a bit of setup for the actual unordered list. Let's actually target the list items inside of there now. So for each list item, we want to set their display property to inline block. And you can see this will have the effect of putting them side by side horizontally. And in order to center these items in the middle of the header, I'm just going to set their line height equal to, to the value that's stored in the variable of menu height. Okay, so I also want to set the position of these equal to relative as well. And with that done, we can then target the actual inner anchor tag that's inside of there to finish off the styling of these. So all I'm going to do is set the color of these to black. I'm also going to remove the text decoration as well. And then finally, I'm going to set some padding on the left and right, and I'm going to use the value that's stored in the menu item padding variable, which is actually 20 pixels. OK, so that's a basic menu setup. Now we're going to work on the actual drop down element of it. And there are a few different techniques that you can use here, and it depends what kind of effect you're after. Uh, you can have an effect where you hover over and the menu drops down, or when you actually click on one of the items, the menu drops down, or maybe some other completely different interaction. I'm going to go for the hover drop down effect. So when we hover over one of these items, uh, some inner list items that are contained within it will be displayed below it. So that's probably the most common use for this type of thing. So let's go with that for our example. And first we need to go and actually put some more markup into our page. So let's say menu item two has actually got another unordered list inside there with another sub menu. So let's add in the, another UL. And again, we'll add another couple of menu items inside of there, uh, each with anchor tags as well. And let's just put in a hash for their href. And we'll just say menu 2a and also menu 2b. And you can see when we do that, it does all sorts of bad things to our menu here. So we've still got something in the white menu at the top, but a lot of it's been pushed down into the ground image that we've got here. So we want it all basically on this white line. And then when we hover over menu 2, we get options menu 2a and 2b. So let's go back to our styling and see if we can fix that. So the first thing we want to do is set up a hover event. So what are we going to be hovering over? Well, it's going to be one of these list items. So let's close down the anchor tag for the moment. So inside the list item, when someone hovers, so we'll do ampersand hover. Let's just put a bit of a visual cue to say that we've actually hovering over the particular list item. So I'm going to set the uh, background color uh, equal to a darker white. So I'll use the darken SCSS function, darken and pass in the white variable and just darken it by 5% if we save that. Now when we hover over these menu items, you can see we're actually uh, seeing a different color on them. So we can see that hover event is set up correctly. So let's add some more styles here. 
So let's do something about these menu items here that shouldn't be displaying anymore. So uh, just inside of this list item, we'll go outside of the hover selector just for a moment. We're going to select the unordered list that we've just created inside there, which if we go back to our markup is going to be this one here, uh, because we've already selected one unordered list and we're looking at the list item that's inside it and also the unordered list that's now inside of that list item. So I'm going to set up a few rules here. I'm actually going to put its height of that element to zero and then set the content of any overflows to hidden. And you can see now that content that was inside of the unordered list is no longer appearing, although it's still breaking the actual flow of the original items that we had there. So I'm going to set the position of the this particular unordered list to absolute. And there you can see that now our flow of our menu has been restored because this item has been taken out of the document flow with the, the position absolute. So let's go back to our hover and actually get that to show when the user hovers over menu item 2. So what we can do now in this hover selector here, if we actually target the unordered list that's inside of it, which is basically this same element here but we're in a hovered state, we can then set its height to auto. And then when the user goes over and hovers over menu item 2 now, you can see that the second unordered list is actually now appearing, although it's got some problems. And you can see hovering over those menu items in the unordered list is actually changing the background colour as well. But it's obviously not quite appearing as we'd like it at the moment. So let's try and fix that now. And the first problem we've got is that the text inside of these menu items is just too big for the actual list items themselves. So it's kind of overflowing onto the next line. So we need to set some kind of width on this absolutely positioned item here. So we could, for example, go in and do something like this. And you can see now they're appearing OK on one line. And you can use this approach, but the, you can see the list items here are actually bigger than the menu items above on the main menu. So another solution would be to make all of these menu items appear the same size. So we could do that instead. So if we simply go up to the list items that we've got here and set its width property here, and we can use what we've got set up in a variable here, which is the menu item width. So now you can see these are a bit more spaced apart, but when we hover over these items here, everything is the same size. So you can use this approach as long as you don't mind all of the menu items being exactly the same size. The only other alternative really is to have a fixed size for the menu items that you've got in the dropdown. So the other problem is obviously that the unordered list under here hasn't got the white background, which would probably be preferred. So let's go and fix that now. So I'm actually going to set the background color of all list items equal to the white color. And this just ensures that every item that we've got in our list, whether it's on the top level list here or whether it's in the sub menu, is going to be used in the same colour. So that's pretty much our menu done, but there's a few improvements that we can make. The first one's a functional one, so you might notice that the list item here, although we're hovering over it, we haven't actually got the anchor tag here, it's not actually taking the full width of the list item. That's because the anchor tag is set as an inline element and it needs to fill the complete space that we've got in the list item. So that's a simple change. If we just go back to our anchor tag here and just set its display to block, like so. If we go back now again and when we hover over all of the list item, that anchor tag is now set as a block level element, so it's filling up all of the list item. So that's probably preferable. So we can click the actual anchor tag anywhere within the drop down list. The other things I'm going to do just to improve this are visual. So I'm just going to go and set some opacity for the hidden unordered list. Just set an opacity of zero when it's hidden. And then set an opacity of one when it's not hidden. And that won't make any difference to us at the moment. But if we actually then put in our unordered list rules, if we put in a transition, for opacity and just set it to half second and ease it in. Now when we hover over the top level element you can see we get a nice fade effect and of course you could make that a bit longer if you wanted to just to demonstrate it. So now hovering over menu 2 will give us a nice fade effect for the drop down menu. And the final thing I'm going to do just as a visual improvement is to set the border radius on the unordered list, that's the drop down list that we've got. And I'm just going to set the bottom parts of the border radius to six pixels. And what that will do is just give us a rounded effect at the bottom of our drop down menu. So the fading in and the border radius are completely optional. It's down to your personal choice. And obviously, you can put any other kind of effects in there that you like too. But I think that just gives a little bit of polish to our drop down menu. The one thing that might be useful is to indicate where drop down menus are present in our menu that we've got at the top here. So other than actually hovering over those menu items at the moment, you don't know which one has the drop down menu on. 
So we could go into our markup and put some kind of symbol like a, an arrow or a plus sign to indicate that's where the drop down menu is, but we can also do a similar thing with CSS as well. So here in our anchor tag, we can target a couple of pseudo selectors, the first being the after. And what we can actually do is set the content of that to a plus symbol, which you can see adds a plus symbol after every anchor tag that we've got, which is fine, but we only want to show it for the elements that have got drop down menus. So we can use a second pseudo selector, which is only child, and then select the after element again. And in this case, we'll just set the content to a blank string. And you can see that removes that symbol from the other two menu items, which don't have drop down menus. So the plus symbol only really shows when we've got more items to show in a drop down menu. So that works by using the only child selector and saying if there's no children inside of the anchor tag, which in this case there aren't for these two elements, then don't show the plus symbol. So the second part of this tutorial is to make the drop down menu responsive, which is basically to take this top level menu that we've got at the top of the page and make it usable on a mobile device. So if we switch in Chrome over to a mobile view here now, you can see it's not too bad, but it could be made better to work on mobile devices. So let's go ahead and add a media query in here so that we can customize the way the menu looks on smaller devices. So here I'm just going to target a screen media and when the maximum width of the screen is 600 pixels, we could go smaller if we wanted to, but this seems like a good value at the moment. We're going to do a couple of things to the header uh, or in particular the nav navigation element that's inside of there. So what we're going to do is just take off most of the padding except on the left hand side, just to bring the web agency text over a little bit on the left. And then we're going to target our top level an ordered list item and for all of the list items that are in there we're going to say display is equal to block. So here we've moved the menu onto the right hand side of the page completely which is what we're after to maximize our screen space and the main problem we're going to have with this menu is that the hover event doesn't exist on a mobile device so if you see I'm hovering over menu item 2 here now and the drop down is not appearing but what you will find is most mobile devices will trigger a hover event when you actually click so if we click on menu 2 now you can see the effect does kind of work, but you can see our drop down menu is actually underneath the rest of the existing menu. So we'll add a few more rules in to see if we can do something about that. And I'm just going to target the unordered list, which is inside of a list item. So this is going to be the drop down menu and I'm going to set its position to static. So what this has the effect of doing is when we actually click on menu two, menu items 2A and 2B are actually right underneath the menu two item. And if we click on a different menu item, they then disappear. So there isn't really an ideal solution for this, but the idea of sticking all of the menu items underneath each other and hiding them if they're not actually in focus or they haven't been clicked on is probably the best that we can do with this particular style of menu. And of course you could add some more styling onto this sub menu here, maybe push it into the right for, for example, or change its color so it's more obviously part of a sub menu. So we could do something in here on the list item. For example, setting the background color, Again, I'll use the darken function for something like 4%. And for example, we could put some padding on the left for each of those list items as well. So that it looks a little bit more like submenu at least when we're in that responsive view. Of course, what we'd want to do if we were going to use this in a real project is to have this as some kind of off-screen menu. So basically slide this menu out of view when we're on a mobile device and then have some kind of hamburger or menu icon to actually toggle that item in and out. But I'll cover that technique in a different tutorial as here we're just mainly focused on doing the drop down menu. So there you have it, there's how you create a simple drop down menu with CSS. Those are just the basics of creating a drop down menu. You could obviously customize this with your own styling and fit it into whatever website you're working on. But hopefully you've seen how you can use some basic CSS to target some hover events and then show or hide a drop down menu based on where the user's actually pointing at. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to support the channel so you don't miss out on any future tutorial updates.